All right, folks. I haven't gone and picked up any real parts or nothing. Um, we should have some stuff in this week. I think some of my Speedway stuff. I don't even know if any of that applies to this. I think it's more for the Essex, but anyways, here we are. We're back. I have ordered some random stuff, so I feel like kind of just spitballing and dancing around on it a little bit, but um, I ordered up some like a power lock kit. I know this sounds weird, but I've done this in the past to do uh, door poppers. Just because we got a modern latch, it doesn't take much to actually open it and stuff. So uh, my goal is we're going to get us some uh, power door locks. The reason why I go with that, it comes with a nice remote, nice and small. This locking or unlock doesn't really relevant. Well, I actually shouldn't say that. I uh, usually set up one side the lock and then the passenger side unlocks. That's kind of how I do both doors or I have done in the past. I'm hoping that'll work with this setup. Yeah, it will, because it fights one. I wire one backwards, so then one actually opens, and then when I lock it, it just tries to fight itself, but it doesn't do anything. So that's my goal. Gonna get that in. We got the little kick out dealios that will just stick in to push the door open. Uh, yeah, I guess we're gonna start with that. Hopefully, well, when I go to town, I'll see if I can get that drive shaft. We'll do that. Maybe we'll play a little bit more with our motor and the fuel tank. I think that is where we're going to go with it. That way we can sort of semi figure out where we're going to go with the box here. Like we'll actually be able to start uh, bolting the box. No, no, we got to put some paint underneath it. I don't know. We'll probably still be visiting. We can, when we get the wiring, we're going to have to sling that through everything. But yeah, for now. For now. Let's do some quick wins for the door locks and see where we get there. <laughs> see if it'll work. Well, it works. So technically, I hit my door lock. It'll pop open my driver's side. Slight little hiccup. To do the passenger side, I gotta do twice. I guess that makes sense. Like a modern car, uh, if you wanted to unlock your door, it would just do the driver's door. And then if you hit it twice, it would do both doors. So that makes sense. So anyways, that's the only hang up. The doors actually pop pretty good. I don't know if I would bother putting these in because it's, uh, it just kind of, it pops out enough and it actually wants to shoot out pretty good. So I don't want to have it where it flings open and it's a windy day and yada yada. So anyways, that works good. And that's the only way to get in the truck. So what I'm going to do yet, and I have to dig around, is uh, find a cable yet. Because I do want to put a mechanical um, backup. To get in there because if you got a dead battery you're kind of hoop getting in it's not like i have a wing window or nothing on here so if this thing's closed up there's not really any way to get in this sucker so all i did <clears throat> is we got our normal tug handle which we're gonna rig up to the original so you pull that that opens the door because i put these latches on upside down like from passenger to driver's side you can see maybe you can't 
inside you see that's actually was the original door handle when you would pull the handle it would pull up i just have it rigged to go down and then i'll have to fill a few holes but it ended up where the window track thing is in here it's um uh like i'm gonna have to still build some kind of a track this thing's floating but anyways distraction aside the screw fit in the one hole the other one fit in there the kit comes with these rods all I did is gave it a similar kink to the bottom and it actually popped in and locked into the original place so I don't know I'm happy with that I did this on another car like years and years ago that one is um, why do I do that it's because I think this was like 35 bucks for a lock kit versus I think it's like a hundred and eighty dollars plus shipping and whatnot to do uh, uh, like an actual door popper and it's just modern so it doesn't need a lot of a lot of tug anyways that's it i'm still going to put a cable going here who knows in the fender or somewhere where a feller if you had to even under the hood where a guy can at least pull and pop the door open in an emergency like if my battery went dead that's kind of my take on it if your battery's dead and you can't get in your vehicle it kind of sucks um yeah <laughs> <laughs> anyways we got this concept works i don't know i'm gonna wait till i get wiring before i really go nuts with it but at least i know it works i can unbutton it we can fix this up because i got to get some grommets and some stuff to go through um i guess you could follow the door hinge but anyways we got to do some throughs i call it through like a cable management through the door we don't want this stuff getting kinked it's not very strong to start with all right so we got that out of the way or we know it works and then we have spare spare solenoids so win All right, folks, how many of you use your vice to actually put your U-joints in? I usually use a ball joint tool myself, but... Anyways, we got our cap on, dry shaft's in. We had a little bit of a fight, because I guess the, um, what do you call it? The, the cap must have been squished a wee bit, so trying to get the clips in was a bit of a fight. But it's in, good to go. Jump here, shifter. We got a lot of everything done down below here. I think what I want to do now is let's uh, let's work on the fuel tank and get that neck uh, welded on. That's the plan there. Because so I have a sending unit for this, and the best I can tell, other than we got some splits in there, she looks pretty clean for the most part. There's a little bit of junk in there. Maybe I should go wash it. Maybe I should take it to the car wash, wash it, and then uh, come back. Basically what we got to do is close this and weld this on. Because that we haven't done the hole into this panel yet. And I noticed before I had it a wee bit off center. Not that that really matters, but I should maybe try to uh, yeah, be fine. <laughs>
Well, maybe I'll just blow it out first. We'll see. If it's not too bad in there, then, uh, well, we'll blitz it up. I think over here I've had my sending unit sitting forever. And hopefully all my other bits for it are here. Actually, I think it just came with this, which actually now is going to suck now that I think about it. Because I don't think it came with screws or a rubber dealio for it. Well, that's kind of crap. <laughs> Let's just make sure this is even the right one. It's supposed to be for a tripod. Hmm. It's not looking good. All right, let me try to test fit this first here. Figure out what I bought. All right, I decided to just cut a big hole in the side. I have to weld this up anyway, so eh, what's, a, what's an extra hole? Uh, the reasoning for that is I just wanted to go in and actually like blast it with the laser. So it's pretty much clean. Like I don't think I could pressure wash or get anything as nice as that, that is. So I'm pretty happy with that outcome. Um, and then I just kind of got carried away and just cleaned the outside a little bit. Um, it's not perfect. Uh, basically, all I'm going to do is like lacquer on some heavy paint on it anyways, so or brush some on. Anyways, we cleaned up the points. Now I'm going to, I basically did fit the tank in the uh, truck quick, and I reoriented the filler a little bit, because before it was just offset from center. Now at least it'll hit center behind the license plate, perfectly squared. Um, so anyways, now we'll pull up the TIG, and uh, we're going to weld up around that filler and we're going to fill this hole and I'm going to try to find all my bits like this is supposed to be for this tank I already had to modify it a little bit cut some excess off so it fits in there but hopefully I can find my screws and everything else I had for that should be here but what do I know that's that was a long time ago when I unpackaged that thing and I don't know where I put anything now <laughs>
Well, I fully take this well up, this, the neck. It's not very pretty because I just, well, my gaps, nothing was good. And I'm not a very strong TIG welder. I should be practicing a lot more, honestly. Um, this thing's a lot more forgiving, this HTP over my Lincoln welder, but uh, I'm going to have that one. Anyways, we got this in. I like just the TIG weld because it's um, slower. It's like a gas weld. You can, you can kind of see or tell everywhere that there's a possible of a pinhole, but like things I can see that will possibly leak. Uh, steering, I can see that. When I stack with a MIG, I find I always, I always have a leak. And I do with the TIG welder, but my chances I can, I know I can do a better job of it. Anyways, that said, I can see that I'll have a little pinhole there. I don't know if there's anything else. Again, this was not a very nice cut. Even this one, I kind of blew through a few times. Um, but this one looks okay, but I can see right here, you can see that little... So I could hit it with the, the TIG, and I might yet, but to me to play it safe, I just rough this up and then I hit it with some uh, seal all. That's what it's called anyways. I think it's in here. Like this stuff. And it's for like automotive. You can use it on gas, oil, anything. Like even if you had a, a leak in your fuel tank, you could, you could patch this while there's still fuel in it. You kind of wad a little bit on your finger and then if you had a leaky hole or a little something, you just kind of hold it on there and then uh, pull it off, wad a little more on and then you're, you're golden. But again, you get that stuff on your hands, it's on there for like days. Anyways, I'm going to rough it up. We're going to seal that up and then I'm going to brush a coat of paint on this thing. And then uh, it's pretty much ready to throw in. I got to go hunt around, find some rubber straps just so we can... Uh, put on top of the tank here for some isolators and underneath. Uh, usually I use mud flap. I'm gonna go see if I have some carpet runner, like just some thin, thin rubbers all the feller needs for that. But at least that'll go in, it'll be done. I think maybe we'll actually, I do have line. Maybe I'll actually run the fuel line. I do know that I have misplaced this gasket. I don't know where on earth it is. So, uh, I did pick up some gasket material the other day, so I guess we'll cut ourselves one out and hopefully this is like, can work with gas. I don't know, rubber cellulose for sealing water and coolant. Okay, this is not good for that. What is this one? Sealing oil, coolant, gasoline. Boy, that looks thin though. Well. I'll keep hunting around, see if I can find something to use to squish between there. And then uh, we can throw it, in the, throw it in the truck and it will probably stay in there. <laughs>
Well, you gotta see what you're doing. Can't blindly do it. If you don't go too hard, you can do a slower fire. <laughs> Here. That's a mount. Right. That's normal. Okay. You don't quite got it yet. Oh, no. Nope. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got Ryder's trucks back in. Seeing he was doing some torch work, we were basically blowing off all the mounts. I think he's got everything for the front clip. Now nah, he's still got one more bolt down there. Right down here. Yeah. So we got one more bolt, and I think we can kind of set her down and see if we can lift the cab off the chassis. That's what, I'm, that's what we're hoping, because he, he busted all the body mounts off. So there's one there and then there's the two in the back. We got to deal with the shifter and the steering column yet, but we'll either cut them or pull them out. I don't know which way we're going to go. But it'd be nice to know that the cab is loose and then we can take it from there. Well, last night I didn't get too much done. Ryder was out, so he started working on his truck, or he's been kind of progressively trying to get all the sheet metal stuff off. Last night he managed to do that. He got torched off the bolts, so the cab I think is even ready to come off, but we haven't didn't get that far. There's a few little bits that we got to take off under here, gas pedal. I do a little bit of tweak into the steering box. We kind of cut it loose, but. The steering box is pretty kind of interesting in the sense that I think they use these on the Dodge, like the cars and everything. There's still a bunch of adjustability in it and I think it'd make a good hot rod steering box. So we're not gonna cut anything. We're gonna try to save the whole works cause well, maybe we can repurpose it down the road. Anyways, we got the front off. Cab's ready to yank. Um, I don't know if we'll end up pulling running boards and, to get it off. I don't, we might just use the tractor and pull it off nicely that way. I think the big plan is I have a Dodge Dakota clip, so I think eventually we'll kind of slice this, throw a clip in the front and uh, swap out the rear and uh, eh, whatever. The main picture though is we want to get the cab off and this off because they're kind of smaller bits that can linger around the shop and then 
when he's got time or I don't have anything for him to do, he can kind of do little repairs and fix and knock dents out and fix rust. That's kind of the, the plan there. Anywho, on here we got the light on. We got the fuel tank in. Uh, I didn't have any strapping, so what I did, as you've seen me before, I was cutting some rubber inner tube. So we kind of stuck that under there, so that's all good. You also see me, I decided to add a return line. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be, if I'm, well, I probably am going to use it because the fuel pump on here, here has a return. So on the hot days when you get all that vapor lock, it's kind of nice to actually put a, uh, a return system just so you don't have a whole lot of suffering and sucking. <laughs> um, we made a gasket that's bolted in. This should be all good. I got to see if I have a fitting for this because it'd be nice to at least run all the fuel lines. I'd like to do that. Get those at least ran because we can run the fuel line over up on this side and then we can button up a few of these lines as well while we're at it here. Uh, and then I guess eventually when we do all the brake stuff that can all run over on this side. Fuel lines just make sense on this side because the pump is there and that's kind of how it was factory. So, And everything I made on the pump or on the tank kind of sticks to that one side. So yeah, I guess we'll run those. I have a whole bunch of line and stuff here. So we should be able to just start boogieing along and see where we get here. I have some, uh, I'm pretty sure this looks like three eighths. That looks like three eighths. This looks like five sixteenths. So I think that's all we're going to run is five sixteenths for the fuel system because, well, really, it's just a plain Jane small block Chevy. So it's not going to take a lot of a lot to uh, fuel that thing. So anyways, I guess, we'll, I guess we'll get started here. Uh, let's run some fuel lines and then we're just that one, one step closer to uh, being able to start this thing. I'm hoping that my speedway orders in so we can just finish putting the motor all together. I did get the air cleaner, but that was about it. And it's just uh, absolutely nothing special. We just got to put a few different colors under the hood there. So, hey, should work fine for what we're doing. Also, I didn't mention that I, <clears throat> also I didn't mention, but I, I undercoated this thing instead of uh, painting it like I was going to, but I felt that gave it a better fighting chance there from getting pelted from stones and everything being where it is. All right. Um, well, now that I dug out some lines here, let's uh, start building our fuel system.
Well, that didn't go the way I thought it was going to go. That uh, was quite the struggle. I have, this is sitting here. This is not exactly the way I wanted it, but I don't know. Like, it's, it's not really, it doesn't hit anything. It's just, it's not very pretty, but. And then over here, we have it coming over. You've seen me originally, I tried pulling it this way, but that didn't want to work because we got to that cross member and then I couldn't shove through to get to the original hole. I even tried a fish line, that wasn't happening because the way we were trying to jam everything through. Then I came back and it was kind of chaos. I wanted to go up and over the frame, but that wasn't happening yet. So we had to kind of go around the outside of the frame and then come back in. Anyways, that's, that's all said and done. Up in this vicinity, we got our fuel, our return. We got it isolated underneath there. So I kind of wanted to filter up here just because it's easier to get at if a filler had to look at it on the side of the road. Um, I was struggling up in the front to flare the lines and then I didn't realize, well, I actually, I kept, this thing kept coming loose and it didn't occur to me you can actually take this thing out and put a nut on there. So in that tight space, I could have put a wrench on there and actually snugged up that fitting. But anyways, this one's that Master Cool kit. It's on the spendy side, but it, uh, it uh, it works better than that Viver one that I had. The Viver one, if you're just doing brake lines, it works totally fine. Um, Where I always struggled with it is when you're doing a power steering line. There, the, the steel's so much harder, and it, that other one didn't have the clamping force. The dies, I guess, were not as nice, and I actually stripped the inside of the die out. So I just splurged and should have just bought this one in the first place. Again, if you're just doing regular brake lines, that other tool is totally fine. It's like a quarter of the price of one of these things. Um, it's just, I like to sometimes flare the ends of my power steering lines when I do stuff. And yeah, the other one just didn't do it. So this is similar to the one that I had, but uh, yeah, a feller had to pay up for this one. <laughs> this, uh, the other one I scored at a swap meet way, way back. Trying to do about six things at once here, so I'll put that away after. Anyway, so we got the fuel line in. So I'm, I'm happy with that. Um, I kind of thinking this is about as far as we're gonna get with this one. Um, I believe next round uh, we'll do brakes. We'll get those going. I should have the rest of my parts from Speedway, so at least we can put the motor all together. Uh, we got the other power steering pump, but I might have to make a bracket. We'll figure out a few things on there, but hopefully we can actually, even if we got a jimmy rig it, fire the motor up and, uh, well, yeah, just fire the motor up. Um, waiting on a harness, uh, painless reached out. They actually wanted to send us some stuff. So that's awesome. I got them to send me a wiring harness and I'll try, uh, an actual painless harness in here. Um, yeah, it's cool. Anyways, folks, uh, I want to thank you all for watching, and we will catch you on the next one. Later.